Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Salar Khan here and I welcome you. So in the previous video, we talked about what? We talked about the hydrothermal coordination and this was the a coordination equation which is equal to lambda if no losses are considered and this is equal to lambda into 1 minus this thing if the losses are considered. Today we see an example. Let's say we see an example. So let's say the first example. So what do we have is a hydrothermal electric power system consists of one hydro unit and one thermal unit. The load cycle the daily load cycle is divided into three periods where the optimal water discharge Q is found to be shown as in the accompanying figure. So they've given you the discharge for the day. So they've got, so which means the discharge versus time curve is given and the discharge versus time curve means what? That this is a hydrograph. So the units are given which is million cubic feet per hour. The time is given in hours. So for the first six hours of the day, not necessarily the first six, uh, it could be any six hour duration, right? So for the six hour duration, this is 38.6, 38.6. Then what do you have from six to 16, which means for 10 hours, you have got 93, uh, 93 and then for the remaining 24 minus 6 8 hours what do you have is 63.6 .6. oh, this is 24 and this is what 63.6 so this is given is the discharge the daily discharge curve and you're you're given what the hydro and one thermal so I will write over here the first one is thermal plant one so plant 1 is thermal so F1 I would write is 410 plus 3.385 P1 uh, plus 0 0.007 P1 squared 0 0.007 P1 squared megabit used per hour right and the next the second one the second one is what the second one is a hydro station so the discharge is given which is q2 is 1.8 plus 0.14 p2 and plus 2.2 into 10 to the power negative 4 p2 squared and this is in million cubic feet per hour now the, the, uh, the question is divided into two parts. So part number A states what? Compute the active power generated by the hydro plant for each time interval and the available volume for the 24 hour duration. So the plant, the hydro plant is F1. So I would write over here that P1 is unknown and the total volume of water for the day is unknown. Yes, so this is part number one. Part number B states what? Assume the transmission line losses are negligible. So which means that the power loss is zero. You don't have any power loss equation. And the optimal water conversion coefficient is 21. This mu is given which is 21. Compute the incremental cost of power delivered and the thermal power generation. So lambda and the thermal power generation P2. No. Thermal, thermal is P1. So over here you have to find P2 and thermal is P1. So over here you have to find P1 uh, as well as the power demand for each intervals. Power demand for each intervals. Is that fine? It is. So let's say I divide this interval into three parts. So let's say this is my first interval which is for what? which is for the first six hours or I will write over here from zero to six right yes so what do I have over here first of all the given is that I have got my discharge discharge is 38.6 I have got the discharge equation if I put this in the discharge equation can I not get p2 I can get so this implies what you put this in the discharge equation p2 so you will get the value of p2 and that is what that is what that is so you have one negative value you will get two values because this is a quadratic equation so neglecting the negative value you have got your p2 value which is 200 megawatts 
so P2 is done right yes now the volume is unknown so the volume would be what for this duration this is, uh, volume is Q multiply T this is the area under the under the what energy under the hydrograph so Q times T which is volume Q times T so for the first six hours duration so this much volume is used 38.6 multiply 6 is the volume used which is 231.6 million cubic feet 231.6 million cubic feet is the amount of volume used in this six hours whereas for the total day if you want to calculate total volume available for the total day so this would be 38.6 multiply 6 plus 10 hours are these multiplied with 93 and then plus what do you have 63.6 uh, multiplied with 8 whatever the answer may be in million cubic feet. fine yes so uh, do I have over here the total volume? I don't think I have. I don't think I have. 1670. 1670. Check it out for yourself, please. I've not mentioned in the previous videos also, the calculations might be wrong. Most of the time they are wrong. Do the calculations yourself. From here, just get the idea right yes now what do you have is so the volume is done the p2 is done now you need to calculate p1 you need to calculate pd you need to calculate lambda so let's say i move to p so i move to part b so i would first have to take the derivatives let's say df1 with respect to dp1 so this would come out to be 3.385 plus 0.014 p1 0.014 p1 then you have what dq2 with respect to dp2 so this would be 0.14 plus 4.4 into 10 to the power negative 4 p2 right now we use the we use the coordination equation have a look we've got the hydrothermal coordination equation over there so i would write over here that mu times dq with respect to d p is equal to df with respect to dp so have a look the value is given is 21 dq with respect to dp is given this is this thing 0 0.14 into uh, 0 0.14 plus 4.4 into 10 to the power minus 4 p2 and this would be equal to what this would be equal to df with respect to dp so 3.385 plus 0.14 p1 right yes so over here now you know that p2 is what p2 is 200 megawatts so put the value of p2 and find the value of p1 so if you put the value of p2 and find the value of p1 so that is 100 megawatts that is 100 megawatts fine yes now what do you do uh, you've got your p1 you've got your p1 now you need to find lambda so if there are no losses so i you can equate either of them so i would let's say equate the df equation with respect to dp equal to lambda this implies what this implies 3.385 plus 0.014 p1 is 100 and this is equal to lambda from here find the value of lambda which comes out to be 4.78 4.78 and that is in rate per megawatt hour fine yes so lambda is also un, uh, done now power demand so the power demand is what power demand is basically equal to p1 plus p2 if the losses are not considered so the power demand comes out to be 200 plus 100 is 300 megawatt so the power demand is also done this was for the first interval can you do it for the second interval by yourself can you do it for the second interval by yourself or I will do it? I will do it anyways. So let's say the second interval is from 6 to 16. I would write over here. The second interval when the time is from 6 to 16, 
hours where the discharge is given that is what that is 93 million cubic feet per hour so you put the value in in this one so which means uh, in this equation so q2 is 93 which is equal to 1.8 plus 0.14 p2 plus 2.2 into 10 to the power negative 4 p2 squared now you will have to do the calculations and for that i will need my calculator i will take it and this would be a little time consuming now i should not do it but anyways so first i'll take 93 to that side so 1.8 minus 93 comes out to be negative 91.2 so i will have a zero equal to negative 91.2 and now i will go to the equation mode uh, where is the equation mode this is it so a is what a is 2.2 uh, into 10 to the power negative 4 then B is what it's 0 0.14 and C is what it's negative 91.2 so if you solve this so you have a negative value for the power which we do not need it is 1036 and similarly the next is 400 so from here you have calculated your P2 which is 400 megawatts P2 comes out to be 400 megawatts. Now the volume used in this interval of time, so the volume is Q multiplied T, which is 93 multiplied 10. So this is 930 million cubic feet of the volume is used in this interval of time. Similarly, again the same steps. You've got DF1, you've got DP1, the same equations. Now what do you have is use the coordination equation again so mu times dq mu is what it's 21 dq times dp is what this is this 0 0.14 plus 4.4 uh, into 10 to the power negative 4 and this is multiplied with p2 which we have got is 400 and then this is equal to what where is it this dfdp so this is equal to dfdp which is this thing 3.385 plus 0.014 p1 right yes so let us do the calculations let us do the calculations what is it it is 21 then i've got the bracket 0.14 plus uh, then i have what let me include another bracket 4.14 uh, into 10 to the power negative 4 close this bracket multiply it with a 400 close this bracket and close the whole bracket 6.416 this comes out to be 6.41 6.4176 and then minus 3.385 so and then divided by 0 0.014 so this would imply your p1 so minus answer minus 3.385 this is 3.0326 and then divide it by 0 0.014 you get 216.6 you get 216.6 megawatts so have a look p1 is done over here you've got p1 you don't have any losses you can calculate the value of lambda so i would put uh, df dp equal to lambda again 0. Point, uh, this one 3.385 3.385 plus 0. 0.014 p1 which is 216.6 and this is equal to what this is equal to lambda so this implies the value of lambda would be what so i will calculate it 216.6 multiplied with 0 0.014 and then plus 3.385 so this comes out to be 6.41 this comes out to be 6.41 you you need to check the calculations lambda is done power demand power demand is p1 plus p2 400 
616.6 megawatts and that is it that is it this is for interval number two in the same way in the same way you can go for interval number three so interval number three would become your homework the entire unknown quantities i need them in the comment section please two i have run the third one the discharge is given it's 63.6 in the same way find p2 same way find volume in the same way then p1 then lambda then power demand this is the homework for you is that fine it is i will do the next example i will do the next example that is example number two so what do i have uh, losses are negligible in a hydrothermal system with the following characteristics so the loss equation is first of all zero then you have what the plant one is thermal with the governing equation is 100 plus 2p1 plus 0 0.001 p1 squared and then you have the hydro where we have q2 and that is 400 plus 50 p2 plus 0 0.01 p2 squared and this is in cubic feet per second so the thing is that this is the only technical point over here whenever you are given cubic feet per second you need to convert it into megawatt hours cubic feet per second you need to convert it into million cubic feet per hour you have to million cubic feet per hour you have to convert it to this so you do what you multiply the cubic feet per second with 10 to the power minus 6 because you have to include million so divide it by a million so 10 to the power minus 6 and then you have to divide by hour so multiply it by hour the, so the number of seconds in an hour are 3600 so which means the q2 equation you multiply this by this thing 3600 into uh, 10 to the power minus 6 so this would become your q2 equation which would be what 1.44 1. 1. plus plus 0. 0.18 p2 plus uh, 0. 0.36 into 10 to the power negative 4 p2 whole square right yes so this is your equation this is the only point that i needed to mention over here next what do you have is the optimal water conversion coefficient is found to be 12.01 i will write over here that the water conversion coefficient is 12.01 uh, the daily load demand on the system is 700 megawatts for the first nine hours so power demand is 700 megawatts for what for nine hours and then power demand is 350 for the remaining 15 hours it's 350 for the remaining 15 hours so what do you have compute the optimal equivalent thermal and hydropower calculations so p1 is unknown p2 is unknown as well as the system's incremental cost that is lambda and uh, the power delivered uh, of power delivered increment cost of water and the available volume of water so these things are unknown so let us get going let us get going so what do you have is so you take the derivatives first please so you have a df1 with respect to dp1 what would it be it would be t2 plus 0 0.002 p1 similarly you have d q2 with respect to what with respect to dp2 so that would be this thing 0 0.18 plus 0 0.72 into 10 to the power negative 4 p2 so you've taken the derivatives right yes now you can see uh, you can see what nothing nothing <laughs> You can see nothing. Just give me a second. You have the conversion coefficient. You have the conversion coefficient. Uh, uh, so let's say this I'm talking about the first interval. Okay, this would be the first interval. This would be the second interval. So I'm talking about the first interval. So what do you have is first of all, from the coordination equation, you have mu 
and then uh, mu is already given mu is already given so this is 12.01 so this is mu times dq with respect to dp so this thing 0 0.18 plus 0 0.72 into 10 to the power negative 4 p2 and then this is equal to this thing 2 plus 0 point double zero two p one right yes so please uh, do the little calculations over here and write an equation in terms of p1 and p2 right and an equation in terms of p1 and p2 and this is your first equation right yes similarly you also have this that p1 plus p2 which is the power demand is given which is 700 in this case so this would become your equation number two solve equation one and two you can do it you know solve equation one and two by yourself so the power p1 would come out to be what i would write over here the power p1 would come out to be 272.32 272.32 and p2 would come out to be 427.67 megawatts so p1 is done p2 is done now have a look you can uh, you want to calculate lambda so df dp df dp is equal to lambda or mu times dq dp is equal to lambda so no losses are considered right so you've got the equation for df dp you, you know the value of p1 so which means what that lambda would be equal to 2 plus 0 0.002 times p1 which is 272.32 the value of lambda comes out to be what the value of lambda comes out to be i will write over here is 2.54 rate per megawatt hour 2.54 is the rate per megawatt hour so you've got this right yes now the volume available so for the volume available you've got your p2 now if you've got your p2 which is what 427 let's say so from here you can find out your q2 from here you find out your q2 right which comes out to be 85 by putting in this equation this comes out to be 85 million cubic feet per hour only for the first duration this is for the first duration right yes so this comes out to be the volume and then uh, this comes out to be the discharge sorry this comes out to be the discharge if you put p2 in this equation then the volume required in this particular interval or the volume used in this interval would be this q multiply t so the q is 85 and the time for this is 9 hours so the volume in this uh, one comes out to be 765 million cubic feet 765 million cubic feet right so this is also done similarly the second interval the second interval is again your homework for this i need the comment section as well the comment section is open for you guys you have to solve it in the similar way what do you have dfdp dqdp right yes so from the coordination equation you've got mu you've got the equations for both right equation in terms of p1 and p2 then what would happen p1 plus p2 would become equal to 350 in this case solve the two equation you will have a value of p1 you will have a value of p2 right yes you can put it equal dfdp equal to lambda or you can put mu times dq with respect to dp uh, dp2 equal to lambda this is df1 with respect to dp1 so you can also do this from here you can find out the value of lambda now when we you have done the value of lambda now what do you need you need the required volume so for that you are given the discharge equation you have the power which is in that equation is p2 if you've calculated p2 you can put it in the discharge equation and find the discharge then over here the time would be what over here the time is 15 hours in place of this 9 hours so you will get the volume and this one was let's say volume 1 so for the second you will have the volume will be q2 multiply 15 hours whatever it is the total volume of the day total volume of the day would be what this would be volume 1 plus volume 2 for the total day 
right yes you can do it by yourself i need the answer in the comment section i will finish this video over here i will see you in the next video till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye